Today we're going to test out the new Apple AI features. Most what is that? <laughs> I haven't actually even noticed them on my MacBook at all and I realized that actually I have the new Apple intelligence on my MacBook so I thought why don't I actually do some research and see if these features are actually gonna make in any sort of difference in my life at all if you're interested in seeing if all the hype around the Apple intelligence is even worth it then stick around because I'm gonna try and push it to its limits and maybe even try and break it enjoy the show This is my first time trying to connect the MacBook to the monitor since I got the PC. The problem is the monitor only comes with one HDMI port. So it's kind of hard to switch between my Mac if I want it on the monitor or if I want the PC on the monitor. And I'm just trying to figure things out at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab my other USB-C to HDMI cable for the MacBook and see if I can just plug that in that way. I just don't want to have to keep unplugging and plugging in into the back of the monitor every time I just want to switch. I need to find a better solution. So if you guys have any suggestions in the comments, please let me know. Look in the cable box. I gotta find it. It's in here somewhere. Okay, this should work. And then I also have the touchpad for the MacBook and the Apple keyboard, which will just connect Bluetooth so we can set it up. So let's go get this set up. Bro, I haven't like used this See, before I had a PC, I would always connect my MacBook straight to the monitor, and that would be the whole setup that I had. But since I got the PC, I just haven't used it. Like, if we look at the world and the way that the world is going with AI, it's one of those technologies that's been introduced, like the phone was introduced. But the way that AI has advanced, if you had to look at it, look at it on like a chart it's like just skyrocketed in terms of how quickly it's advanced it's becoming so much more advanced than the hardware and technology can keep up with all right guys sorry about all the mess around now that we've got all that sorted i really do want to test out the new features of apple intelligence on the new macbook and see if the new siri is any good um, so we have a couple new updates and yeah i'm sure a lot of you guys actually feel the same way that you didn't even notice that you have apple intelligence First thing that Apple is claiming that is new with the Apple AI on the mail is that you can view priority messages in your inbox. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't actually see. So it says view priority messages in your inbox and you can go to, so I'm in my mail at the moment. I can go to view and this button here says show priority. I turn it off, nothing changes. I turn it on, it's on, but nothing is changing. And it should be showing me like the top priority emails that I have. Maybe I don't have a bunch of priority emails because these are, these, a lot of these are just ads. But that is something that is quite concerning with, I do get that this is the first generation of Apple intelligence, but to be fair, we're in February now and we have had quite a few updates um, since then, software updates. So that should be something that is fixed. And I have actually been reading on the forums. I literally just typed in, to the into Google mail Mac priority messages Apple intelligence right the second result is Mac mail priority inbox not working as expected so even on reddit I was reading and someone said that Apple intelligence experience is BS so take that um, as you will I think a lot of features are working for some people a lot of features aren't working so this is an ad from Nike this email right here but the cool thing about this is there's this button at the top of every email and it's the summarize button so if you click summarize it's going to just provide me with a quick summary. So Nike United is for players who want to rise to the occasion and make their dreams a reality. Shop the United collection. So it's just a summary of what the ad is telling me. So I got an email from Epidemic Sound. Have you heard? What if I just want to summarize? What, have I, what they're trying to tell me? Uh, but Epidemic Sound is proud to be the home of award-winning artists. Listen to a playlist of Grammy and Grammy award-winning artists. So that's like literally the summary. It's just telling me that they have award-winning artists. And if you scroll down, you can see that there's just more detail of that summary. So this is a cool feature that I like that will save me a lot of time going through and sorting through my emails because I can already tell you it takes at least like an 
an hour to get through all the emails that I need to get through. A lot of the times I don't like to just read the preview and just delete it because you never know if it's important or not. But this feature that summarizes it, summarizes the email kind of helps you to figure out if it's an important email or not. See, that could have been like a bill that I had to pay for Epidemic Sound, but I know now that it isn't. So the other feature that we have is Smart Reply. I was to reply to this email. It will come up with these, sort of like what you see in iMessage, and you can see they sort of glowed with the Apple intelligence colors. But I can just say, okay, let's try, got it. And it's gonna create a Smart Reply for me. It's gonna say, got it, looking forward to see, seeing you tomorrow. So that's a really cool feature. It's just a quick reply, I don't have to type. So as you can see, Apple Intelligence is doing its part in saving you a bunch of time with emails, which I really do like. Okay, so you know how I said the priority messages isn't working? Another thing that isn't working is, it was meant to have a thing called summary previews. And I am not getting that for some reason. So if I even, it tells me to turn it on, I have to, I, so this, when it's ticked, it should be summarizing these message previews, um, sort of like you see here with this um, message here. So this is a um, message from my girlfriend and you can see how there's this little symbol that is saying that all the messages she's sent me, you can see all of that is summarized. So for someone like me that's getting bare messages from my girlfriend all the time, I can get a summary of all those messages just by looking at the Apple intelligence. And I feel like a lot of people just don't know about this. Until a couple days ago, I didn't know about this summarized feature because it's so hidden in your inbox. Like you press on a message, it doesn't actually show you. You kind of have to scroll up a little bit and then you will see the summarize button. So those are the new features. This the features that aren't working for me is priority emails and preview summaries. Another cool thing is if I am, let's say, writing an email to someone, let's just write this to myself. So let's say I'm applying for a job and I'm writing an email to someone and I want to make it sound a bit more professional. I know it takes some time to craft these emails, right? For me, these days, I don't actually write my emails. I just write just the gist of what I wanna get down in my own words, and then I just highlight it. And what should happen is AI should pop up. See this little button here? You press on this button and you have all these cool features. You can describe your change, make it more um, professional, make it more, concise, whatever you want, but you have buttons down here to make it more concise, professional, or friendly. You can proofread it for different areas if you don't really want to change it around, or you can, or you can rewrite it as well. Um, you can grab a summary of it, you can just get the key points, a list table you can compose. Like there's a lot, lot of cool things with the writing features that AI offers. So let's just get the key points of this, gonna grab those key points. I can literally copy it or I can replace it. Let's replace it and it's putting it in dot points for me. Now I wouldn't send an email like this with dot points. I would grab what I've written and turn it into a bit more professional. It's gonna think for a little bit with this cool new animation and it'll provide me with a professional email that has a very professional tone to it. So this is a really nice feature because I barely have to worry about if I'm sounding professional, if I'm sounding bad, it's got proofreading in it. But that's Apple Intelligence on mail. I'm gonna probably take a break now and go cook up some lunch. So I was just on my lunch break and I thought what better way to just take a break from everything than to play around with the image playground feature that now comes with um, Apple AI. Now the, the reason I really want to emphasize that I took, that I was using this on my break from like my productive work in a way is because I really can't see a way that this will actually be helpful in my day-to-day -day activities and being productive in my uni, 
in creating videos on YouTube and that sort of thing. I just don't see how it's going to be a help in that sense. However, I do remember last semester in one of my IT classes, we did have to do a lot of designing and that meant that we had to make a lot of prototypes for the app that we were making. So for IT system designers and anyone who does a lot of prototyping in their industry, I can see this maybe being quite useful, but that does depend on it being 100% accurate all of the time, which it isn't. But yeah, I was kind of playing around with, you know, generating different images and my face and stuff. It's weird because my face is like sort of, there's some pictures where it looks a lot like me, um, but there's some where it just doesn't. Like this one, for instance. All right, y'all y'all can see that, right? How on earth does that look anything like me in terms of my hair? Y'all can see my hair. Now tell me, since when do I have black African-American hair? I've heard that with the smiles, a lot of times when it makes images of people that you know in your contacts and it makes them smile, their teeth look really, really weird. It's more for fun than it is for actually for actual work. I mean, it is called the Image Playground. So I think it's a bit of fun. I mean, it'd be cool in some cases when you don't want to use your real face for like a profile picture. Maybe that's a use case for it. For me at the moment, I can't see this being super useful in my day-to-day -day life, which is what this video is all about. Seeing if the new AI features are useful. It's kind of cool. You could make little profile pictures. But what, what like purpose is coming? See, that's the for? same thing that I had. I said like, okay, so this is cool, but what's the use case? This is one of my favorite new features that comes with the new Apple intelligence, the new Siri. You know how when you're writing your assignments or you're doing your research or writing emails or coding or whatever it is that you're doing and you have that extra tab open with ChatGPT as your AI assistant? Well now that is built into macOS natively and you can have conversations with ChatGPT directly through Siri. And here's the best part, you can be anonymous, meaning you don't actually need to have a ChatGPT account. Now yes, personally, I do think it is beneficial to have an open AI account because you do have access to all of your chat history and if you've paid for a more advanced GPT model you'll have access to that as well but on the other hand it does make chat GPT so much more accessible to the whole world there are some downsides that I have run into I have noticed that when I ask it some questions it does tend to jump to chat GPT more than I'd like to like for instance there was a feature advertised where you could ask it a bunch of different questions and Siri would search your entire computer for all different details all of your apps and it would come up with with an answer to your question but for some reason it can't do that for me and it keeps going to chat GPT um, more than I would like it to but there are other cool features like you can type to Siri now if you are in a situation where you can't really speak out loud so another cool feature is you can ask Siri questions if you don't know how to do something on your Mac or on your iPhone you can ask it how to do that so for example I'm asking Siri how can I change the wallpaper on my MacBook and it tells me to go into settings and go through these following steps and I think it'll be quite useful for users who may be new owners of Apple products and the biggest upgrade with Siri is the context and conversation history that it now has which is a real game changer for Siri because for many many years Siri has been light years behind all the other voice assistants out there like it just couldn't compete with Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant because of how limited it was. But now I feel like it is taking that, taking the right step and allowing you to almost have a conversation with it as it remembers each previous prompt that you asked it. All right, let's delve into one of the features that could seriously level up your productivity on your Mac. Notification summaries and reducing interruptions with Apple intelligence on Mac. So here's the deal. Apple uses its intelligence and language understanding to make notifications way less frequent and way less annoying and will only bring in the important notifications. Notifications now get summarized. Instead of seeing every single notification in its full glory, you get the most important bits first. So instead of checking your messages and getting lost in a group chat about weekend plans, you'll only see key details like, hey, we're all meeting at 6 p.m. or something like that. But in the case that you do want to turn off your notification summaries off and you would just prefer the full description notification you just have to go to the Apple menu system settings and then go to notifications and then from there you'll see an option for summarized notifications now you can toggle that on and off depending on what you prefer and the cool thing about this is you can get super specific with it as well so you can turn notification summaries on only for specific apps like say messages slack and mail but it even gets better with the reduce interruptions focus apple intelligence is smart enough to show you only the notifications that might actually matter right now so for example if you're deep into like a word document and then you suddenly get a message about something like an urgent reminder or like you need to pick someone up then a notification will pop up and it'll be labeled maybe important 
happened. And you can decide if you want to act on it right then or you can decide if you just want to dismiss it. Um, to turn this on, you're going to want to go into your settings, then go into focus and then just turn on the reduce interruptions focus. You can also do this through the control center and then you can customize it however you like, whether you want to schedule it or if you want to pick which notifications you want to allow through or even if you want to pick which people will always be allowed to text you through this focus. It's highly customizable as well. Overall, I will say so far this notification feature is something that I do find useful with the new Apple intelligence. I did set out to see if this is actually a gimmick or if it actually will help me in my day to day life. This genuinely does make my life seem a lot more less distracted and intrusive with all the different notifications that I get from the apps that it's just just like ads that you get throughout the day from YouTube or from Facebook or from all your social media and then just a bunch of different shopping ads that you get from all your shopping apps. But I am curious, what do you guys think of these new notification features? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think Apple has actually done well in managing these notifications or is it maybe too controlling and too confusing that you have to set up all these settings to get it right where you want? Let me know down below. So Safari just got some AI powered updates. I want to see if they're actually new, if they actually do improve my browsing experience. So the new features that we do get is web page summaries the new reader mode and also a table of contents on each web page so with the web page summaries we do get ai generated like tldrs for articles which is great if you don't really want to read it all but it does struggle with some like forums opinion pieces and like messy layouts it just doesn't sort of summarize it as well as you'd want it to in terms of how accurate the summary is i'll say it's decent but sometimes it does oversimplify um, and miss some key points so safari has always had whenever you're on an article website or whenever you're reading something on on a website it has this feature where you can go into reader mode which now you can actually remove the ads and distractions that you don't want it also adds automatic summaries and a table of contents for longer articles again this doesn't happen with every article it's kind of hit and miss i like how it's very well integrated into the browser it feels like it's not like an extension or anything it's just the AI features are there. I would like to see a bit more AI features, maybe like Siri integrated within Safari where I could like have a, a little bit of like a chatbot where I could talk to Siri about different web pages and stuff. That would be really cool to see. For me personally, I do still think Opera browser has so many more features than Safari does even with this update. I mean, it's got the reader mode and the web page summaries. That's the only two new things. Opera browser still has so much more on there that you can just get done. So many more features that it has to offer than Safari. Okay, now we're gonna get to my personal opinion overall on the whole Apple AI thing. Now me being an Apple fanboy, I will be honest, I was very skeptical of the whole new Apple intelligence at the start when they first brought it out because I've been for years and years and years just been disappointed with the very minor upgrades that they've had in iPhones over the years and even with MacBooks as well. But I can't lie, Apple have kind of hit on this one. Apple intelligence was way more useful than I actually thought it would be. And I'm glad that I got the chance to try it out today because without me actually doing the research, I actually wouldn't know all the different sorts of features. So hopefully this video helped you guys to find out the different features on your Mac that you didn't even know about. But I gotta get out of here and head to my soccer game. So that's going to wrap up my experience with apple intelligence if you guys enjoyed the video please like and subscribe thank you all for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one i'm out